Good afternoon. Did I really just say afternoon? Good morning, Vietnam, baby. All right, there we go. Second time's a charm, I guess. Uh, we've got good news today, and as I'm talking, we're we're cooling down a little bit. But uh, <laughs> it's always funny when that happens. But we have good news in a couple forms, actually. We have a new study. This is relatively new. This is two days ago. This is posted. Uh, and then we also had this bullish article, and this is from Larry Raymer, the guy who's always bullish. Uh, but it's good to see. He says it's the same old talking points. You know, <laughs> he said the same stuff for half a year. But, uh, but you know, it's good to see that he's still bullish and he's still doing what he can to, uh, to, to do, do his best and and not and fighting against the meme stock labeling with BNGO, right? So it's great to see. And yeah, we're up, uh, we're up what two percent? Okay, <laughs> oh no, never mind. We're not up two percent. Holy shit, we're up uh, half a percent pre-market because we're absolutely cooling down here uh, before we start eight minutes of the open here and i want to start a little early so i could actually to actually tell you what's going on here and we have this study right here let's just go let's just go over the study first. i think this one's a little more exciting so it's nothing good but it's nothing great but it's still good okay <laughs> uh so basically magic arrow i haven't looked at this entire study yet but I, what i will say is that okay ape language uh what does he say here okay Hold on, where did he say? Okay, Ape Language, they have used several testing methods, several methods to preserve DNA at best to get the best results they used. Uh, they used whatever this means with BNGO optogenome genome mapping. That's, that's pretty much what we got. And we are, and if we go ahead and go down here, we were being used with some other uh, area, other, okay, but let me read this. Okay, let's go down a little bit more, one second. Okay, yeah, they optimized this method with BNGO. So again, it's it's the same old thing. I know it's nothing crazy. It's like, Brian, what does this mean? I'm not 100% sure what this means. I don't really know. I'm not really familiar with what they're talking about here. But what I'll say is that it's just more applications of the Sapphire, right? It's just more It's just more applications. Basically, you love to see it. And the fact is, if they did this study, if it was posted on July 14th, there's a decent chance that the consumables, the samples, and the cost per genome that the, these guys used, all of these places used, whichever one of them or all of them that used this, whatever one of them or whatever it is, whoever used the, the actual sapphire to, to analyze the genomes and, the, um, and, and do the samples, they had to have either paid BioNano in right now, this quarter, or last quarter, which would be quarter two, and that would count to or quarter two ER. And my point is, we've seen so many of these, and I think we're going to see a lot of consumable revenue. And I remember, if you if anyone remembers my $1 million consumable revenue estimate, kind of, 700 k to $1 million, because we've seen so many of these. We've seen more than usual. We've seen so many studies. And, of course, there's going to be stuff that we don't know about, but a lot, I mean, it just it's just basic common sense when you have a ton of studies and you're like, okay, th I see more studies this quarter uh, before the ER than I did last quarter. It's like, okay, we're probably going to get more consumable revenue. That's because more people are using the Sapphire, more people are analyzing the samples, doing higher volumes. Not necessarily higher volumes, there's just more labs doing volumes in the first place, right? So you like to see it. What's going on? Are we going to moon? Uh, you know, I think, you know, I was looking at the Russell 2000s chart, uh, the other day, and I actually really like what I was seeing. So if we look at the daily chart here, it's beautiful. I mean, you've got a clear ascending level of resistance and, uh, and, and we bounce off that right now. And right now we're pretty much at the bottom. So I would like, yeah, I do think, I do think there is a chance for high growth to do something short term. Also, by the way, I did sell, I sold half of my shares on uh, uh of ubxy uh and after i literally i literally sold it right at the top right at the top there luckily but uh yeah it's getting killed right now so i only have 15 shares of that right now but if we go back to bngo what i'm seeing for bngo right now let's go back here okay let's go ahead and draw up a, an us any support we've got we've got four minutes to the open here we've got an us any support We've definitely got one, and uh, and this is, I mean, it's in the after hours and pre market, so take it for what it is. But right now we're holding very well, and right now high growth is doing very well. It's a blaze sea of green. It's a wall of green that's beautiful. And what I want to see today for BNGO, everybody wants to see this, uh, but everyone wants. To, I mean, we want to see us as outperform some other stocks or at least match them, right? Every single day besides yesterday, we saw. BNGO go uh every besides yesterday we saw BNGO go wait go underperform everything. Every day it was underperform. It was, we were down six percent while Nano Dimension Microvision, they're only down two percent, three percent, maybe four percent. You know, it's very frustrating. Yesterday we finally saw us outperform some stuff. I want to see that trend continue. We definitely deserve it. We have more good news and more fundamental increases in value than any of these other companies in high growth. 
and we still out underperform them. So I would love to see some outperforming today. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, stop price short term. It, it, even stop price, it, it really doesn't matter what the hell we do right now because we're getting really close to earnings, and that's pretty much going to get going to dictate what we do from there. Morning, everybody. We'll buy some more BNGO after my trip to the moon on Starship AMC. Oh, yeah, AMC's back to good. Yeah, because AMC's been going up recently. Everyone's back to AMC, yeah. <laughs> Everyone hated it through the downturn. Now they're back. I wish you good luck on that, my friend. I wish you good luck. I, I'm rooting for AMC, so hopefully, hopefully, you do, hopefully you do well. 592 right now. This is like right at my average. Here, let me go ahead and unlock my account so you can actually see my average and everything. Right on my average. <laughs> oh, not anymore. Not anymore. What the hell was that? What is this? This is such unnatural price. Actually, this is even more unnatural than usual. And this is right up to the open. Usually, you don't get this. Like, five cents at a time. Moving randomly. You know, this is just very weird price, actually. We'll see what happens. But I was going to say we're right around my cost average price. But now, we're way below it. <laughs> Big stunks. <laughs> More than everybody. I hope we get a damn good day today. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We've got a good article. We've got a bullish article. Also, we've got the freaking uh, the failure to deliver. Increasing to 2 million for a brief moment there. Manipulation, anybody? Okay, maybe. I don't know. That's not super high. That's not That's not amazing evidence for it, but that's pretty... That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty compelling evidence that there maybe was manipulation, you know, because that's that's a very high number, and that can be an honest mistake, but usually not. But yeah, here we go, boys. Newsweek, Mark, what's up, Blaine? What's up? Good morning. Usually we're above my average price, but lately, nope. I know <laughs> that's that's how I'm feeling. Yeah, yeah, man. Right now we're we're I mean, we're bleeding at the uh, up to the open. We'll see. We'll see what it looks like. Everything is selling off right up to the open. Ooh, all right, we'll see. Are people going to come in and buy the dip, or are people going to take profits? I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. One minute to the open, baby. One minute. We've got a bullish article. We've got a new study. This was okay. This was posted two days ago, but we, but we got another bullish article that was. I mean, I don't even want to read this to you guys. You can read this on your own. There's nothing new here at all. It's just Larry Raymer. It's the guy that's been bullish for half a year. He's saying the normal talking points, which is fine. It's good to see that he's still bullish, right? You definitely don't want to see an analyst that was super bullish turn to bearish because then that would that would suck right because they these guys do some of them do talk with the company right especially the uh the the other the, the last article with the recent investor meeting if you if you remember that anyone all right it's trying to hold 200 ema well we're already a fair amount but above that but yeah it's trying it's trying we're already a fair uh, the 200 ema is going to be at 560 ish 560 570 all right let's see there it is right there all right oh oh Oh, selling coming in at the open. Selling coming in at the open. Not that much quantity though. A fair amount of orders of selling, but not that many. Not that many actual shares. Yeah, it looks like high growth bouncing. Nano Dimension and Microvision are holding up pretty well. And BNGO is underperforming again. I am gonna get pissed off if we do this again. I know it does. It does not matter midterm at all. It does not even really matter short term. Yeah, it matters. But at the end of the day, earnings is going to decide whether we're at eight dollars or six. But again, we're underperforming. Microvision and Animation again leading us, doing better than us by over one percent each, pretty much. That is that gets on my nerves a lot. That that pisses me off. Right to quote me. Right, I say this. I take a shot every time I say this. It pisses me off that Nano Dimension is valued at high, at a more than a dollar above us, and they have a higher market cap as well. No reverse reverse splits or splits going on. Oh my gosh, I will add shares today if we if we dump with high growth doing well. I will absolutely add shares. I'm expecting people to die, buy the dip right here because there's no reason why we just dipped right here. I'm expecting. I will add shares today. I will absolutely add shares if uh, if we dump today. Yeah, easy. Easily, I will. Especially if high growth is going to continue to do well. 100%, I will. We're now in the red, down down half a percent. 581 right now. Got the bearish flip everywhere. Uh, let's check the RSI. I bet we're golden. Uh, almost. Almost golden. Ah! What's the volume? The volume is shit, my friend. The volume is always shite. There's no, the volume is always horrible. 
It's a little too early to compare, but I guess I can. Yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> the last one was 700,000. Today so far, 400,000. But we still got three minutes to go. So I guess it's, I guess it's on track to be about average, So which, which is horrible, which is about 10 million to 9 to 12 million. That's usually our, our volume that we get. This is what's frustrating, man. Microvision is doing well out the open, and and Nan Dimension, they're both doing well out the gate. BNGO doing the exact opposite, which is extremely weird. Extremely weird. I wouldn't be surprised if we correct way upwards or at least to like half a percent pretty soon here just because this doesn't make any sense. You know, this is not how we move. We always move. Nine times out of ten, we move. I mean, all, ten, 10 out of ten times this last month and a half, it, really, we move exactly with them. Right. I mean, if they're green, we're green. If they're red, we're red. That's as simple as it gets. 588. We need to break. I, I want to close the day today above the open. I want to continue this breakout pattern that we've been that we've had. And we broke below the ascending level. Are we going to get rejected here as well? Oh, come on. There we go. There we go. Come on. There we go. Let's get up there. 590. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. 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 Come on. Come on, let's get up there. R2, we're going up, not down today. No, no, stop it. We're going up. Force, the powers of the force. There we go. Morning, Brandon. Ready for this manipulation to be over. Can't wait for 2023, lol. Well, I would say you should be you should be waiting for the earnings. That's what you should be waiting for. Because no, regardless of what kind of manipulation they want to do, if earnings is good, they cannot they cannot stop us. Because everybody sees the earnings and everybody tries to everybody tries to price it in. So if it's really good, if we are going to get real, if we really are going to get four million for the quarter, it's over. We're going up twenty percent easy. And that I I would probably I would expect we're going up higher than that, given the la the reactions on the last two earnings that were barely a beat. Right, it's more realistic that we're going to go up thirty percent, maybe forty, maybe fifty, if we were to get four million this quarter. That's assuming the estimates say the same. Which, to my understanding, the consensus right now is three and a half million for the quarter. Five eighty eight right now, about half a percent still. Very frustrating. Near to mention Microvision still doing well. Ah. The management of Microvision is scummy, and the pumpers can only work with fake story. If the earnings were so good, why wouldn't they put them out now? Uh, to, probably because they wanted to. They don't really want to focus on. They they don't really. I, I would say they probably don't want to. Like, if it is really good, why wouldn't they put them out now? I don't like that argument because you know, look at any look at all the earnings beats ever. There's been plenty of earnings beats that have been on schedule that have not been you know uh, rescheduled to be early, right? So I don't like. I don't think it's necessarily bearish just because they are not uh, making it, not putting the earnings date out like uh, for you know next week. You know, I don't think that's necessarily bearish at all. At the end of the day, they are they have a lot of work to do, and I want them to get it done without having to focus on rescheduling stuff and taking all their time. Win Lambo, win Moon, Brandon, win Lambo, win Moon. Oh man, I don't know. I can't tell you for sure. I can't guarantee you anything, my friends. You gotta make your own decisions. But uh, quarter two is my target. <laughs> quarter two is my quarter two earnings, of course. Robbie got new diamond ball implants after Savar Gene singles. He's bullish on being and now and his price starts one hundred dollars. End of year, wish him well. <laughs> oh, too funny, too funny. Bought three hundred fifty shares yesterday. Woo. Squeeze that booty. Okay. Uh. Well, I, I I mean there are a lot of there are a lot of shorts to squeeze. Yeah, that's damn sure. But I mean right now right now the price just does. Look at this. Look at this. Everything is green. We're underperforming everything again. And this I this is going to make me add shares because this just pisses me off. This is just insulting to to be in This is just insulting at this point. We're barely in the green while everything else is doing really well. At the same time, we're literally outperforming on the fundamental side. And in my opinion, this just gives you a point. Of, this just gives you a chance to load up. All right. That, that's it. That's It just gives you a chance to load up. There's no other way to say it. We're, I mean, it's simple. Everything is going up. Bio and Nano mentioned Microvision. They're going up. Where they're out. They're doing well. They're doing what they should do on a day where the Russell is up one uh, percent, and we are down with great. With I mean, no, I wouldn't call this great news. I would call it. I would call it good news. Here, right? We got this study that that's actually a couple of days old, I guess technically. And then we got this thing right here. And we're underperforming. And the fact is, it doesn't really matter what we got today. The fact is, the last month we've been outperforming on news-wise. No reaction. I mean, zero. I mean, if anything, we've got a negative reaction to good news, right? <laughs> that's just what it is. We need some bad news today, right? We need some. We need some bad news to come in, and then we'll go up by twenty percent, right? If good news happens, we'll just go down twenty percent. Uh, I'm just messing, but uh, but it's very frustrating to see Bionio constantly underperform stuff, and it doesn't really matter. 
I told you it doesn't really it doesn't really matter at all because right now it, whether we go up to eight or six before earnings, it doesn't matter because earnings is going to dictate whether we're at five dollars or four or eight or ten, right? It's literally that's what it's going to come down to. Because with a stock like this, it's really hard to price in, and you guys know this. It's hard to price in the news once the numbers come out. It's because people don't understand how to price in the news because it's too esoteric. It's like peer reviewed studies, OGM concordant with carotiding fish CMA. What does that mean, right? No one understands what that means. So once those numbers come out and they see revenue beat, BNGO beats on revenue, huge beat, boom, we're up 30%. Okay, boom. There's no questions. There's no questions asked, man. That's it. That's it. I think we have to go through a few proven quarters. The drop in price due to shorters, as I said in the interview, is positive. I recommend not buying and selling at this point. Shorters need volume. Just sit tight and let the company perform. Sure, yeah. We got earnings coming up, man. We got earnings coming up. Are we finishing above six today? I think we are. I think, uh, you know what? Okay, I shouldn't even say, <laughs> I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that we would be up like, what, 3%, 4 5% if we were, if we, if we did that. But here's the thing. If we, I think there's a high chance that if high growth stays like it is, we're going to end up in the green one or 2% today. Yeah, easily. If not above $6. That's just me. That's just me. I like the setup right now. I like the fact that we're bouncing up 200 day EMA. I love the news standpoint. I love the I love that we have a catalyst coming up. And then my, I think it's gonna be a catalyst. You know, I could be wrong on Ernie's. I think Ernie's gonna be good. I think it's gonna be good, man. Uh, and, and and it doesn't make any sense for us to be down on the day where these two are up two percent. It makes zero sense. So yeah, I do think I do I do feel good about us closing the day much higher than where we are right now. Yeah, absolutely. Just a question on what would you do if we beat Ernie's and we still drop five percent? <laughs> That's impossible. That is impossible. There's no way we would beat earnings and drop 5% unless, I mean, the company would have to say something absolutely. They, they would have to try. They would have to be trying to doom their stock. Brandon, Eric mentioned that plant genome analysis is a surprisingly interesting market for Brandon. This has not yet been taken into account in any of the projections. You're right. You're right. Uh, what do you call it? There's animal research and plant research is something that the Sapphire also does that no one talks about, including myself, usually, except when we get the studies in here, which there's been a fair amount of studies on tomatoes. You guys remember the tomato study? Uh, a thousand others that I'm forgetting, right? Because they're not very memorable, to be honest with you. But but the Sapphire can be used in plants. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good market. Yeah, absolutely. Make a hoodie with all the OG's names on the back, Brandon. I can do that. You want you want that? I'll do that. Will you take it? I'll do it. Planning to hold my shares for five years. When is earnings? Earnings gonna be mid August, my friends. Mid August. Five seventy nine right now. Testing the intraday low. It looks like it looks like high growth. Uh, high growth dipping right now. Look at Microvision. That's ugly. That's ugly. That's almost as ugly as BNGO. Bro, I wouldn't be surprised if we drop dropped a lot before earnings. The hoodie, okay. The, well, if you do want to buy the hood, I don't have that one ready for you. The one with all the the names of the people on the back, but I do have this shirt, the Fellowship of the Sapphire. That one is available, and the the link to that is in the description, my friend. That that shirt is awesome. Yes, if you want to do that. How is Gay MF doing today? <laughs> it's it looks like it's even today. It looks like it's even right now. <laughs> Five seventy nine right now. We're in the red, about one percent. Oh my, I'm going to well. I want to get really angry right now, but I'm also just going to add. I'm also just going to add more if we continue this. I'm just going to add more. I'm going to hopefully get my average price a little lower. Oh, Anthony, thank you, my friend. You don't have to do that. I really appreciate that. I haven't had one green portfolio day in weeks. The Fellowship of the Sapphire shirts hoodie look awesome. Might get one. I think they're freaking sick. <laughs> yeah, the plant market for BioNano is a good one. Yes, absolutely. Whoever whoever was talking about that, it's a it's a it's and it's one of those. You guys remember the quote by the CEO, the the Sapphire. There are applications for the Sapphire that have not even been developed yet. I don't know exactly what he's talking about. No one does exactly, but a plant the plant market and the application for the Sapphire there. That's one that has not really been. I would say priced in to the stop price, right? And there's a lot of stuff that hasn't been priced in the stop price. For example, how good the Sapphire is compared to everything else in the world. That's what that's what hasn't been stop, priced in right now. If they did, if people knew that there was like a hundred percent chance, essentially, of BNGO becoming <clears throat> becoming profitable, like it's it's essentially guaranteed, in my opinion. If they knew how how low risk it is long term, I think this would be valued a lot higher. <clears throat> Brandon added a ton of shares right now. Like you said, who knows if we ever see these prices these low and you can't time the market. No one can, so don't worry about a correction. 
I received this comment on my channel. It's funny. Uh, anywhere, anyhow, I hodl from Spain. Diamond hands, diamond balls, man. I'm hodling. I don't care if we end the day down 3%. If we do end the day down 3%, I will probably add some shares because I cannot help myself at this point. I cannot help myself. Lots of money riding on Eric on his team. These guys need to bring massive revenue for share price to fall. Pat Bios, fingers, uh, fingers crossed. Yeah. They have the opportunity. They have the <clears throat> they have the employees. They have the they have the staff. They have the product. They have everything. They have everything they need in place. It's up for them. It's up to them to, to get the sales, and up to other people to actually buy it. Right at the end of the day, when you're investing in Bionino, whether you know it or not, or not, essentially you're investing in the Sapphire selling a lot. That's what you're doing, and that's the number one reason why I love this company. Why I've actually done what I've done. <clears throat> Man, mother, let me get a drink real quick. All right, I'm officially an ape. I bought yesterday to the moon. Yes, yes. Ape, ape. ape. If you want to be an ape, if you're a Wall Street bets person, if there were, I don't think there are anymore now nowadays. But if you're a Wall Street bets person and you're in BioNano now, yeah, I'm with you, man. Wall Street bets with us, teaming up, apes teaming up with BioNanians and Fellowship of the Sapphire people. That's a net positive. I'm totally for that. We do have a higher short interest by AMC, a very a much higher short interest in AMC. That's a fact, and we've fundamentally only gotten better. And you've seen the manipulation evidence. Okay, you've seen it right here. Look at it. Simple as it gets. Two and a half million freaking failure to delivers. Now, what a failure to deliver is. Do you guys want me to do the spiel? It's kind of complicated. All right, failure to deliver. It's an IOU. Instead of sending out a share, the brokers send out an IOU uh, in place of that. Sometimes they're honest mistakes, but when you get millions of them, when you get millions of failure to delivers with a stock that only trades about 10 million shares a day, when there's two and a half million of those, there's a low chance that that's a failure to deliver. But the thing is, I don't actually think this is manipulation because they actually did send out mostly, they did mostly fix their mistake by the day after that. So I'm not really too worried about that. But this just shows you, and we've had a past of having very high failure delivers. And that is a way, and remember, this is not this is not all of the failure to delivers. No, no, no. Fintel only tracks it from one area, and there and there are way there are way there are not that okay the aggregate net balance of shares that failed to deliver as a particular settlement settlement date they only take their value uh, they only get their data from one market though there could be way higher failure to delivers and way more manipulation happening than it appears to be there's no debating that so everybody needs to be aware that this is a way that they are probably or maybe maybe i should say manipulating the price and when you have a high failure to delivers what does that actually matter brandon why should i care because when they have have a high failure to delivers that increases the supply artificially decreasing the demand and that freaking sends the stock price lower all right 20 percent daily volume that was synthetic shares criminal yeah i know <laughs> i know well not not all of these remember not all of these are some of the usually some of these are going to be honest mistakes but two million of them you know <laughs> some of them are probably not have you looked into eric's past track record is he an outperformer well he's been with bionado for a long time but uh but and before that he's you should read his credentials just go to the bnj website and read and go to eric holman it's very it's just go to their leadership team he's got very very credentialed very uh he started and and been with a couple companies that have done well and then done good things with them so yeah eric does have good pretty good credentials not like outstanding like other ceos some of them but pretty good check amc When I think of AMC's chart, I just think of manipulation, even more than BNGO, man. Even more of BNGO, but but they're both getting manipulated. They're both having shorts and, and hedges and suits working their hardest to send both of these lower. That's my opinion. That's what I think. You bought yesterday, Marcus? What about BNGO? What's your BNGO position doing, my friend? Death and carnage. Death, carnage, obliteration, decimation. I mean, we're getting, I mean, we're not, I wouldn't say we're getting decimated today, but we're definitely getting, I mean, we're definitely getting hurt. I mean, I wouldn't call this getting killed yet. We're getting like, it's like we're getting shot in the shoulder. You know, we're not getting, we're not taking like a a shot to the head, but we're like, it's not like the CEO gets shot in the head, but we're getting, we're getting hurt today. Yeah. And this is, and it's so funny because I mean, it's not funny. It's just sad, I guess, or good. So you can get a buy, so you can buy. It depends on where you, what, what perspective you look at it from, but High growth up, by and large. I mean, high growth by and large. I mean, really, you're looking at red and green now with for high growth as a sector. But Microvision and Nand mentioned they're both green. Microvision's red, and we're underperforming again. And this is why this is what frustrates me the most: the fact that we are getting better news than both of these guys ever have had in their entire freaking career. 
and we still go lower. <laughs> I'm like, what the? It's like, how do you explain this shit? BNG will highlight presentations about optical gene mapping. Yeah, that we that was a while ago. Yes. Why do you always use profanity in the title of video? I don't. I bleep them out, my friend. Yeah. Think we've had one green day the last three weeks. No, we've had three. I think we've had three or more, but yeah, that's still horrible. <laughs> that's still horrible. We had three green days. Yeah, we had three green days since uh since the twenty eighth of of June. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, and uh, I I, t I say all the time if you if this is not for you if you can't take it if you think this is if you think the company is automatically just horrible now that we've had some red days it's not for you you know just take it for look at Mark for example this guy's held one million shares his average price is like two dollars he's held for a while and he's holding for a reason and that's because he's not investing in the stock price he's investing in the company and he's betting on them developing it and doing good things long term and not even long term necessarily right a lot of us think quarter two is gonna be fucking awesome that's what I'm thinking that's what a lot of us are thinking but but we could be wrong but um. You got to remember, with the only reason, the, the only, we are literally moving as a stop price. We're just moving with other stuff, right? I mean, the manipulators and the shorts, I, I guess they have done, I, I mean, this is one explanation. For whatever reason, we're not moving based on the news. We're not moving based on the studies, based on the articles, based on the short interest. We're not moving on the stuff. Did, did we even move when we got the peer-reviewed study? No, not at all. A lot of people were really interested on in seeing that peer-reviewed study because it would really confirm that the Sapphire is legit and it's not like the company's making stuff up about their own product. No, it literally legitimized everything even more that we knew about Sapphire already. And what does the stock price do? It goes down. Okay, the stock price is not the company, and the news affects the stock price in zero ways. And that's how you know we're in a fund. That's how you know we're auspicious right now. It's just like that Jeff Bezos quote, man. Everything about the company is getting better. Right now, you've seen everything about Bionion get better. The stock price went down from 113 to $6 in Amazon's case. That's how you knew it was an auspicious buy. Can you imagine getting Amazon at $6? The reason why you how you the reason how why how you could have got Amazon at six dollars is that you looked at the company, not the stock price, or actually, or or looked at both of them, but m knew when to separate them. Being a long term bull, what is a realistic expectation for price action in the short term, considering the overall market? Just wondering how much time we may have around this price range. I know it's impossible to know. Feeling torn. This is I don't know if you're going to be very satisfied with this answer, Aaron, my friend, but. Uh, uh, I think I think quarter two earnings again again this is, it's all about quarter two earnings we have about a month I don't you know yeah let me go ahead and draw it up here so it actually so it actually is clear okay so basically I can see a scenario where we do something like this let's say the market doesn't do I can see a scenario where maybe even we go down to 550 right that's a possibility the, the I don't think that's very likely I think a high I think a more likely possibility is something like this just staying around in this range something like this maybe okay the fact is once earnings comes in, that is going to determine we're, we're either going to go here or we're going to go here, right? Literally, that's going or, – or or it's going to be on par and we're not going to do anything, right? I mean, that's – or, you know, middle, middle, okay, there's a ton. Of, or it's freaking $6 million and we just go straight up to $10 or 12 right? There are all possibilities there, but at the end of the day, right now, we're just moving with high growth. At the end of the day, one of these days, I think you have to – I don't know when the hell this is going to be. It could be any time, theoretically, but when when you have a – I mean, we've gotten so much good news, and you've, you've, you've seen so many great things happen with the company the last two weeks. I know it's the same old talking point, but it's just true – that right now the price is not it's not priced in it's not priced in at all and whether it's going to be through a revenue beat then it's going to be priced in or some other random day that an institution looks and looks at the news and realizes oh my gosh this is actually a fundamentally improving every day with the stock price going down like 30 percent wow all right i'm gonna buy here and then boom we go over the ten dollars because they just bought a mil 10 million shares uh, okay uh i don't know i don't know man but I hope that gives you something. We're too hard on the stock, expecting too much from the short-term span. The journey has started from only the six months. Need to give it time. Yeah, sure. I still think the big boys are suppressing B&J until the bigger brand name companies can catch up to them. Remember, there's going to be some special interests, or or what should I say? Some... Uh, there's going to be people that are against B&JO as a healthcare company because they want to keep their jobs, right? Big pharma companies... Big, uh, big hospital names, I guess. Even they don't, they might not want BNGO to succeed because if BNGO were to succeed, we're gonna find great things and improve healthcare, right? And drugs and diagnosis, we're gonna make it way easier and we're gonna automate a lot of the process for the customers and benefit everybody in the world for healthcare. 
but we're gonna no, we're not gonna benefit. We're gonna literally screw over. I guess you could say screw over. Okay, it's not really screwing over. It's just a free market, just capitalism. That's all it is. The people who had those previous jobs in the in the in the, you know the the crappy healthcare, the healthcare that we have now, they're gonna lose their jobs. And Saffer's gonna come in, and whatever new drug that they helped manufacture, or whatever diagnosis assay, whatever laboratory developed tests that they made, that makes it easier for the customer and the worker because they don't have to do as much work, but they don't have a job. Some of them don't, but the people that are, that are that don't want that to happen, they are you know what they're doing. Okay, they they don't want Bionic to go down short term. They want us to fail forever, and that's why you've seen so, such a high short interest. Maybe in my opinion, just continually stay. I mean, look at this. You've seen. I mean, the short interest is only rising as we've seen the company get fundamentally exponentially better. What does the short interest do? It matches that, right? I mean, imagine if the short interest was the same as thirty one million right now. Imagine how high we would be. What, $8, $7? I don't know. I don't know what, how high it would be, but we're talking about tens of millions of dollars. Actually, we're talking about hundreds of millions and and million, and tens of millions of shares sold short. If those weren't sold short, I don't know what we would be. We would be valued at a very nice valuation compared to here, though. That's damn sure. An institution sold out, uh, what? At eight, though, that's something. Let's see. Uh, What do you mean? Are you talking about a really old filing? Short interest is annoying, but do you not want? But do you want not want to question why? I think I just did question why. Earnings must be a good if they announce no more share offerings. Possibly indicates a healthy cash reserve. They already do have a healthy cash reserve. They have a cash. Their cash runway is very long. They have like you know we could survive like we could probably survive like ten years <laughs> without uh without running running out of cash on hand. Uh, plus. Yeah, we have three hundred sixty-two million cash in as as of quarter one. The institutions have bought five fifty-eight. I don't think we will go lower. I don't think we will either. I think seven eighty is a monthly realistic target, possibly nine after earnings. I think we could see that absolutely. We absolutely could see that. Yes, and right now it looks like we're skyrocketing with high growth, and this is what's so frustrating. We're just moving exactly with these other stocks, exactly with the sector. Which, you know, when it's green, it's fine. But at the end of the day. We at the end of the day, we're all investing in this because one of these days we think we're going to outperform the other stuff, right? That's why we think it's going to. That's why we're investing in this, and that's why we're so. That's why we're following this company so greatly, and we want the fundamentals to make this stock move on its own and go up when the markets are down and go even when the markets are dipping a ton, right? That's what we want. At the end of the day, we've seen great things from the company justifying our investments, but the stop price has not reflected that, if that makes sense. That's a good line right there. We've seen great things about the company justifying our investment, yet the stop price has not reacted. And that tells you that this is a horrible time to sell, in my opinion. That's just me, especially now when we're under $6, right? Under $6 is a horrible time to sell. And anything under 6 is a freaking steal. Anything under 10 is a long-term steal. Easy. All right. June 25th, somebody sold out. Okay, well. Problem is our small market cap is too it's too easy to manipulate by shorts. Look at Illumina, not affected at all. Sure. Also, we don't have that many, relatively speaking, we don't have that many institutions on our side. Also, I bet there's a lot of institutions that are short that we don't know about and whales that we don't know about because of the dart pool. And we've seen there's an well, at least last I checked. Last I checked, here, let me get out of there. Last I checked, the dart pool volume for Bionino was way higher than the average dart pool volume for a stock. So 589 right now. We are green though. Right, right now, 1% of the green right now. Nice 10K order. Oh, yeah. we Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you for pointing that out, my friend. Yeah, we have about, what, 20K shares almost uh, overall being added at 588 and 589. That's beautiful. I feel like there's only so much the other indices can price in, and pretty soon people will be jumping into the small mid cap. The fact is, based on the, I, I've told you guys this, there's a disparity between high growth stocks valuation and an Nasdaq's valuation. And it all stems from the valuation on February 16th. When you can make an argument with high growth and the Nasdaq on February 16th, you can make an argument that, that all the high growth stocks were inflated by billions of dollars. All of them, literally, like almost all of them inflated by billions of dollars just because of hype and retail. I don't think that's true. I don't think, I don't think retail, I mean, retail doesn't even, I don't think that's true. What I think is true is that there is a that I think I think honestly toots and shorts have taken a special interest and in, and in freaking taking high growth down to the ground. That's what they, that's what they've been doing. That's the only way you explain our current valuation as a sector for high growth compared to where we were at February 16th. Because the fact is we're like lower than we're at, at a, we're trading at like a 60% discount right now 
from where we were at on February 16th. And guess what? The company's only gotten way better. And that's not peculiar to BioNano. A lot of these companies, a lot of these stocks gotten way better, way less risky, way more surefire in terms of revenue and catalyst in the company and the management since February 16th. Yet the stock price only going down. I mean, and most of these stuff, most of the stuff has not even tested all time highs yet, which was on February 16th. And that's insanity. That's insanity. I can't comprehend a price higher of 15 end of year, to be honest. I'm excited with BNGO, but not unrealistic. That's your opinion that it's on. That's your opinion that it's unrealistic, my friend. That's your opinion. All right. <laughs> Let's say let's say BioNano gets twenty million in revenue, like a lot of people are projecting, like my like uh, several DCF models are projecting. Fifteen dollars end of year is is realistic. Yes, absolutely it is. I own one hundred sixty nine k shares. Now I keep and add more. Yeah, legend, legend, absolute legend. And what and this is? Oh my! Oh man! Oh wow! Look at AMC. Damn. Damn. I never like to see AMC red. No institutions put money on this until we pass 10 again. You will see them. We've seen a ton of institutions buying. We've seen the institutional ownership jump from 4% to 16%. This is, of course, delayed by months. Usually this is delayed by several months, if not like five months. Some of them are. Some of these filings are literally delayed by five months. But institutions are still loading up, right? You've seen this this uh, State Street Corp. Okay. 808, that's their average price. But the, the institutional, the, the filing that I'm very excited about is this one right here. 3 million, this is by Investco, DWA, Healthcare, Momentum ETF. These guys were willing to put 4% of their portfolio into BNGO at 637. And your effective date on this is going to be the 30th of April. Their average share price is 637. That's beautiful right there. That's absolutely beautiful. That tells you they're willing to risk 4% of their portfolio, their ETF, their healthcare momentum ETF in BNGO. That's beautiful right there, man. All right. This chat is filled with fake longs. Focus on giving that slight negative tone. <laughs> I don't know. Marco is. Marco, there's a couple people that you can spot out really easily that are, that are trolls. Marco is. Robbie Smith. Dr. Pepper. Uh, mixing scholar is like is like bipolar. You gotta be careful with him. He's a fun guy though. I like him. Uh, and then some others you gotta be careful with. But most people are legit. I don't know. Mostly. All the, we have a ton of OGs on the channel that are awesome. So Newsweed, fair enough. You're entitled to your opinion. I really do hope I'm wrong with my price prediction. I do believe in Brandon ZD. Wait to add, but do not sell. You think we're going lower, huh? The only way we go lower is if, well, I mean, I guess there, I guess there's technically this, there's endless possibilities technically, right? But really, the only way I see us going lower is if high growth dumps a huge amount. And I know, I don't see us happening. We've already gone down a, a super, a, an astronomical amount. And, and the disparity, obviously, like I was just talking about, is undeniable, not negligible anymore. And uh, we're, high growth is due for a balance and bio nano above all else is due for a huge correction in the upwards direction because we got better. I, mean, I know it's the same talking point, but it's so important because the company's only gotten better and we've only gotten down. Ah! It's going to be hard to start the shorts because uh, what do you call it? And this is why I say, this is why I keep saying short, uh, the, the earnings call is what's going to be. The short borrow fee rate is like super low, man. These shorts are getting off really easy. They're barely paying. It's very, right now, it makes a lot of sense for shorts to, it, I mean, in my opinion, it doesn't make any sense for them to stay, right? You guys know what I think, but, okay. I don't know. You guys know what I think, but when it doesn't matter what I think. It matters what most people think, right? It doesn't matter if the stock is good. It doesn't matter if the company's good. What do other people think? <laughs> that's at the end of the day. That's what the short-term uh, valuation of anything is at the end of the day. But <clears throat> this is really low. The shorts are getting a really easy time. Uh, they, they're not, they're not paying much of a fee to short. Good morning, Vietnam. I know this won't be financial advice, but should I sell a put with the $4 strike price with an expiration in November? That's up to you, my friend. Um, that's up to you. I'll say this. I'll say this. Do what you will with this information. I think if earnings, I, I said this before, I'll say, I don't know what my exact number is. I said, I think I said like 70%. I think there's about a 70% chance, and this is real. I'm estimating, okay? Sure, say I'm making some leaps of faith here, sure. 
what I would say, it's hard to calculate exact percentage numbers for stuff as, as hard as this. All right, but basically, I'll say there's like a 70% chance-ish of hitting one of these numbers. Or, no, 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 sorry, that's not what I said. Sorry, 70% chance of hitting higher than three. Here, I'll just do that. This will be more simple. There's a 70% chance of hitting higher than 3.6 million or higher than this. Yeah, I just 70% chance of revenue being higher than three and a half million. That's what I think. 70% chance. That's pretty high. I think that's where you're 3.6 or higher. That's what I think. I think a very high chance. I think there's a very high chance as well of hitting the base case or the bull case. I think there is. The evidence is clear. The evidence points me to believe that it's going to be easily this. The only thing that makes me hesitate in saying like 70% as opposed to like 90% is that uh, the CEO and the um, and the the article and the analyst and the uh, – what was his name? It wasn't Larry Raymer. It was uh, – I think it was Kevin DeJeter. They were not very bullish on their earnings uh, predictions, and they talked with the company. And, of course, they didn't tell them exact numbers. I'm guessing, okay, they didn't give them inside information. I'm hoping they didn't. Uh, and they could be way off. I think they are way off, but that is the one thing that like makes me not super confident. I still am. I still am super confident because the evidence, I, I like the evidence is I, I trust the evidence more than I trust some random analyst. Uh, so, but that, that's the one thing that's, that's making me stop. That's stopping me from, uh, making this 70% chance, you know? We are still in the buy zone. Yeah, we are. We are still in the buy zone, in my opinion. Do we need FDA approved to get validation to help move the stock? Uh, it would help us a lot, yeah. FDA approval would essentially clear us for diagnostic use, which would maybe give us, I mean, probably give us a ton of uh, more, a ton more sales because then uh, you can use the Savar for diagnostics and diagnosing d diseases. Which would be absolutely, absolutely good. Yeah, absolutely, it would be good. It would help the price a lot. And it's my theory that the five large clinical studies. Remember the, the uh, leukemia, lymphomas, solid tumor, solid cancer research, solid tumor, blood oncology stuff, uh, postnatal and prenatal. Those five large clinical studies that we're working on right now. One of them is going to come up. Some preliminary data is going to come out this year online. Those trials, I think, those are going to give you evidence for FDA approval. Maybe it would make. I mean, think about it. It would make perfect sense. But I don't know. I don't know. Okay, that's speculative. So I'm not sure. FDA will come and much more. I see potential Nobel Prize. The next great, great catalyst will be FDA and ARC. I don't know if ARC's going to invest, to be honest. The only way ARC invests is if something different happens with us. Private Bio has a, minute, has a market cap of $5.3 billion and we are $1.6 billion. We should be minimum $12 end of the year. We will hit the upper level in earnings. We will be mapping and sequencing more by words. Whew, and sequencing? A nano nozzle, my friend? Really? When could FDA approval come? Uh, it could be it could be three years from now. It could be hell, it could be it could be any time theoretically, because they could have been working on it already without us knowing theoretically, but I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean it's hard to say. They've hired a lot of C suite members that are have experience with FDA approval, especially uh Richard Shippey. If I remember correctly, not Jason Pryor, but Richard Shippey, he's the one that is one of the people who actually got FDA approval for CMA, which is a very similar, relatively similar technique to being to OGM. So that's kind of, that's kind of why everybody was freaking out about the FDA approval thing not too long ago. Yeah. So to recap the news today, since the price action is really boring, are we barcoding yet? Kind of. We're kind of barcoding right now. Anyway, so to recap the news, I think we're gonna end, honestly, I think we're gonna end the stream here really early today because it's just today's just a boring stream for some reason. I'm just getting that. I'm just getting that vibe. But we do have interesting news today, right? We have this article right here. Uh, this is from Larry Raymer, the longtime bull. He just says the same talking points, right? There's nothing really to go over here. He just says the sapphire is good. It's a legit product. It's got a legit dis disruptive niche. That's all it's saying. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's all it's saying, but it's good to see, right? And that came out today. And then we have this study. This was posted two days ago. It looks like 14th July. Uh, and this is essentially just another application and market for BioNano. Studies in vertebrate genomics require sampling. Okay, yada, yada. BioNano was used. What was the ape language on this? Let me go with the ape language on this. I didn't read this whole thing yet. To get the best results of this, of this method right here. To get the best results of preserving DNA... They used OGM, which is very interesting. 
So, and that's something that we don't hear very often, new applications, sort of a new market for us to, to take over. And this is why the Sapphire is so versatile, plants, animals, the humans, okay. You name it, anything that any DNA that's greater than 500 base pairs, Sapphire is, is the way to go. And the market is bigger than and you and I both realize, I think, in my opinion. But yeah, so with that being said, and then, yeah, that's pretty much all we got. That's pretty much all we got for the day. And the price action is boring. I mean, I'm going to add share. I mean, I'm going uh, to, uh, we'll keep it up here for a little bit, but. Brandon, I would really reconsider buying BNJO warrants. If you believe in BNJO, you can convert these 2023 uh, OA at a great price. War I don't have anything against warrants. Uh, shares are just my bread and butter, my friend. Shares are very shares are much easier. <laughs> Basically, you just need a a patient. You just need to be patient with the company, but beware of potential crash, big correction later down the road in the market. Plan on cashing out and buying back in when it happens. Good luck waiting for the crash to happen and then timing it. You got to be you got to be anticipating the crash cap at any moment, in my opinion at least. But yeah, um, that's the big that's the big risk for buying in the short term. The correct the market correction and the market crash possibility. If you're like me and you're scared with the government spending like uh, the most money now every month than we've ever had been before, and with inflation and with all this other stuff with the government going crazy, which is I, I I'm not which is you know make your opinion on that, but uh. And it's been happening for a while. It's not like it just started, the government spending time. No, we've been spending money for a huge amount of time, and the market just continues to go straight up. It's scary. It's very scary. Uh, but that is one of the biggest risks to buy on in the short term. And although although we're going to do well, in my opinion, long term, there's nothing that can stop us, essentially. That's something to be worried about short term. So, yeah. All right, let's get out of here. I say, I mean... I don't know. I guess we just made a new intraday low. I guess we should keep it on here, but 574 right now. I say we end the stream here. The price action is getting more and more. I feel like the streams are getting more and more boring. I feel like we may, may need to decrease the stream quantity. I feel like unless the price action actually becomes interesting. And right now we're free falling. Yeah, but yeah, everything's free falling right now. Damn it. And this is what's so frustrating. We're making a new intraday low, right? We're doing horrible new intraday low. Microvision, okay, microvision is that's a bad example, but Nano dimension not even close, not even close to the intraday low, right? We're out, we're underperforming in every single way. Not only in where we are compared to where we're at the open and intraday lows, but on the percentage as well, right? We're down two percent. Nano dimension's up one percent. It's like, oh my god. Remember, and Brandon's Amazon analogy from one hundred six dollars. Just be patient. That's what I recommend. I know we're getting car. I mean, <laughs> we're still getting carters today, which is really kind of blowing my mind because I did not think this was going to happen at all today. Uh, again, I'm wrong, but um, I'm just buying more. I'm just buying. If we see five, uh, let me see here. Okay, where's the where's the two hundred EMA? Okay, uh, five sixty eight. If we have five sixty eight, I'm gonna add a couple. I think I'm gonna add a couple hundred shares. I can't even add that many. I can only add 320, right? I'll probably add 100 more maybe if we hit there. But yeah, it's a, it's a, I mean, it's not a, it's a bad day. It's just a boring day probably. It, it's it, more than anything else. It's just a boring day, I would say. So yeah, let's get out of here, man. Thank you all so much, man. So uh, yeah, 573, we're down 2%. I think, and here's my, here's what I'll leave you with for the, for this stream. I'll, I'll leave you with this. I think we're going to end the day green. <laughs> I know it's like, Brandon, you say this every day and you're always wrong. I think, I think there's a high chance of it. And I, and I say that for several reasons. You guys have already heard my, all my reasons, but, uh, if we do hit 568, that's your load up zone. In my opinion, 568, that's where the 200 day exponential moving averages, 568, 200 day EMA. That's where your load up zone. Uh, if we dip below that, if we dip below that, then 549, 549 is your next load up zone. If we break both of those, just catch it. Just get as many shares as you can, in my opinion, if we break both of those. But, uh, but yeah, that's what I'm thinking. All right, guys. Thank you all so much. You will, I think you're going to think you're going to be very happy if you bought the dip right now. I, and, 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 and a, in a end of year, uh, perspective, even after earnings, I think you're going to be, I think you're going to be happy with, with, uh, with if you bought the dip or not. I think that's what's going to happen. That's my opinion. Make your own opinion, my friends. Brandon is pissed. Yeah, I don't know. I'm fair. I, I'm kind of tired today, to be honest with you. But I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I am a little bit pissed. Yeah, <laughs> it's super volatile right now in a highly questionable market hold. The only reason why I'm not pissed right now, like super pissed right now, is because I haven't seen any people, uh, uh, 
coming in here and saying Bionic is a shit company now that we're down 1%. That's the only reason why I'm holding in my anger. <laughs> but with that being said, thank you all so much. Here's the portfolio. Portfolio is burning. Absolutely burning. And with that being said, thank you all so much. This is not financial advice. I will see you all in the next one.